Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to fourth day of Magnus Carlsen Chess Tour Finals. We have uh, also four rounds of the semi-finals and um, Hikaru Nakamura and Daniel Dubov doesn't play anymore because Hikaru won three of the matches, so he qualified to the finals and uh, Magnus Carlsen still have to play with Ding Liren. Ding Liren won the first match, then Magnus Carlsen won another two matches and now Ding Liren has to win this match if he still want to compete uh, and, you know, play in the final. And uh, first game ended with Magnus Carlsen win. So uh, Ding Liren is under huge pressure uh, and this actually is the game number two and it is really beautiful very sharp game uh, so without further ado let's see what happened on the board because it's it's really a masterpiece so Ding Liren as white open with d4 Magnus Carlsen answer with knight f6 we have c4 and now g6 so uh, we're gonna have the king's Indian defense uh, g3 by Ding Liren and now bishop g7 bishop g2 so fianchetto variation of the king's indian defense and now we have castle by magnus carlsen pretty standard stuff knight c3 and now d6 knight on f3 by ding liren and now knight c6 uh castle and uh, we know that ding liren played plenty of games with the king's indian defense as black so he, this is his territory but also uh he loves to play with his you know catalan bishop in this case of course he's not catalan however uh, he likes to um uh, play the fianchetto uh, openings against a lot so this is his standard setup definitely he knows what he is doing magnus goes for e5 and now this is uh, quite interesting because in 2018 Magnus Carlsen played that position with white um, and he actually goes for exchange against Alireza Firuzia and he won beautiful game. This was not maybe not the novelty, but you know, quite a new field to explore. Uh, and after bishop g5, bishop e6, then queen a4. And this queen is in quite, you know, uncomfortable position this rook's gonna gonna come to the center so the queen has to move somewhere and black doesn't have much space actually to continue the game uh but ding liren go uh in the old fashion d5 so it seems like ding liren doesn't care about his c5 uh, square because last years there is some improvement in this opening and black uh, very often retreat with the knight to to b8 uh, and after e4 then a5 and the knight can can jump to to c5 this way for example knight e1 this is actually another idea in the queen's indian defense um just to come to d3 this knight belongs to d3 and then continue the attack with with some ideas um like c5 however knight a6 prevented so uh, it's always you know fight for for c5 square uh, but Magnus went for a more traditional approach and he answered with knight e7. So the idea is to bring this knight to c5 and attack on the, on the king side with f5 move. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, Ding Liren played e4 and now uh, the normal way of course is knight e8 or knight d7. Uh, however, Magnus Carlsen played b6, so he bring extra protection to c5 square, uh, so it's, you know, uh, more difficult for white to advance. It wasn't played many times, uh, however, we have a couple of games in the database, so for example, knight e1, um, and after knight d7, knight d3, uh, knight c5, the knight can be kicked, and after exchanging, uh, then let's say a5, pretty standard move here. Uh, of course, a3 is not possible because the rook is hanging. So uh, after a3, this, this is of course not possible. So very bad. So probably what uh, white would have to lock the position or play something like b a5. And after rook a5, there is no b pawn to support the, the c5. And uh, white actually are stuck on the, uh, on the queen side, which is pretty dangerous for white. Uh, so... 
Dingley and played rook b1, uh, just anticipating this this a5, and now if he plays uh, b4, uh, then all, all of this plan, you know, with pushing uh, c5 makes a lot of sense. Uh, Magnus prevents that, play a5, and now if b4, then again, this pawn, b pawn gonna gonna collapse, the rook gonna have the, the semi-open file, so uh, that's not in the best interest of white. And here white actually has to be very patient, cannot play anything like a3 and trying b4. The problem is a4. Uh, and now white gonna be stuck with this pawn, because whenever this pawn is moved, um, then of course uh, black can take and pass out, and uh, this pawn gonna, not gonna have the support to, to continue the attack. So um, of course the, the, the pawn cannot be taken, because this pawn is hanging, so that is the, the, that is the one problem. And if you try to reinforce it first, then bishop d7 and uh, this pawn can be easily defended. So uh, it's it's not even possible. Rook e1. This was played by Ding Liren uh, and it was quite shocking in studio. Actually, it's blocked the, the knight. The knight cannot jump to e1 and remaneuver to d3. So uh, it's it's slight problem for, for white. I mean, it's a choice. Peter Leko said, uh, okay, he probably knows better what he is doing than me. Uh, but yeah, normal uh, development would be, you know, moving them. Th this knight doesn't look good on f3, especially if black starts the attack on the, um, on the king side. How However, uh, Ding Liren uh, definitely knows that position very well because after knight d7, um, now a3 is possible. Uh, this pawn is not hanging, so that's one thing. And also after f5, um, if black plays f5, then white actually can jump to g5. And look at this. There is a huge hole on e6. This is the problem. Uh, actually, it's not the, the big problem. Magnus Carlsen could go for that because after knight c5, he takes, you know, uh, this square under control. So let's say b4, a takes on b4, a takes on b4, and this knight can take on e4. And after exchanging um, everything here, the position is uh, slightly better for white, but it's still, of course playable. Uh, interesting that the engine recommends g4 now just to take under control f5. It looks, you know, especially in the rapid time control, uh, very risky for white, uh, you know, weakening the position of the king. However, uh, the problem is that after knight e4, which of course can be played, this knight can be, you know, uh, relocated to d4. And it's really beautiful outpost for the Black Knight. So uh, Magnus Carlsen didn't like this idea actually, and he played prophylactic moves h6. But there is also some price for that, because once he go for f5, the g6 will not have much protection. Uh, only the knight gonna, uh, you know, protect that. That means the knight gonna stack on e7. So there are, you know, uh, a little issues here and there. Uh, we have knight h4 by Ding Liren, so he already, you know, watching and g6 and asking Magnus, okay, what are you gonna do about that? Magnus go for f5, so uh, he follows his plan. We have um, e takes on f5, otherwise uh, f4 is uh, very, very dangerous. Uh, completely, you know, uh, weakening the position of the king. Uh, so e takes on f5, this is usually played in these positions. G takes on f5 and now queen c2 by Ding Liren. Uh, and as you see, this knight cannot easily uh, go to g6, like in the most of the variations, this is pretty natural, uh, however, not in this case. Uh, but Magnus uh, developed other pieces, so we have knight f6, now we have b4, and bishop d7 also developing, um, and now c5. So Ding Liren starts his attack on the queen side, now he has a chance, and Magnus first have to reinforce the, the pieces to continue the attack also uh, um, on the king side. We have a takes on b4, a takes on b4, so the rook has the uh, open file. Uh, and here is the quite critical moment uh, of the game. Um, the engine suggests that queen e8 is the is a really great move. Um, the idea is, of course, taking under control g6, uh, so the knight can jump there, but also uh, the queen can go to f7 and put much more pressure on d5, okay? It's, it's for now, it's defended twice, it's attacked twice, and the queen can be, you know, another attacker. Uh, what could happen is c6, and after bishop c8, 
queen b3 let's say defending that um, then knight g6 and after exchanging the knights the position of black would be pretty solid however Magnus Carlsen want to grab the pawn on d5 so he plays e4 making also you know uh, some space for the bishop on the longest diagonal so uh, it can operate over there easily and then Ding Liren played c6 kicking the, the bishop bishop e8 so now the bishop controls g6 so the knight finally can be maybe moved there or maybe uh, the knights can attack on d5. Uh, it's everything up to Ding Lir and what he gonna play now. Uh, and he doesn't defend the pawn. Uh, he plays f3, undermining this pawn center. Uh, so Magnus being down to two minutes, Ding Lir and still has the seven minutes, played knight f to d5. Just, you know, grabbing the pawn. So knight d5, knight d5, and now f takes on e4. And here, uh, what black should play is knight c3. Knight c3 with the attack on the rook. And now how to continue? So the pretty obvious idea is actually rook b3. And this is actually the best idea in the games. And um, it's something ugly like rook a2 with the attack on the queen. However, white can answer simply with rook b2. And after exchanging the stuff, uh, this knight is in the trouble. So knight e4. And although the knight is attacked three times and white can easily win back the material, win back the, the, the pawn, there is a better move. A knight f5 actually uh, winning back the pawn and getting much more active position. Because now after rook f5, uh, the knight can be taken with, uh, with the queen. The, the rook is under attack. So after rook f8, finally queen g4, pinning the, the bishop, attacking the bishop twice. And the position is extremely difficult. Uh, uh, the only way to avoid the checkmate is actually a uh, queen to g5 and uh, white actually can just simply exchange everything like like really everything and then play rook e7 and now um, this pawn gonna fall and uh, this pawn is still protected of course the rook f7 is not possible because bishop is hanging so um that's not the best idea after rook b3 what black could do actually is knight b5 knight b5 uh, and the idea is of course to to fork which um white gonna react queen d3 harassing the knight but knight can still go to to knight d4 attacking the rook so after rook b1 f4 finally can be played and black could have some, you know, counterplay here. Uh, however, Magnus Carlsen played F takes on E4 and our silicon uh, friend started to scream really badly. That's a blunder. That's a blunder, Magnus. Uh, what white should play here in this position? Didn't, Ding Liren didn't find that move. But... I'm not surprised and you also shouldn't be surprised. You can try to find this move if you if you dare, but this is really ugly engine line and uh, and I really don't recommend. But if you want, of course you can pause the video while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So the move you have to find and uh, I don't know. You you can find the move, you know, like rook e4. However, how to find the rest of the line? This is the problem. This this line is really ugly. For now, this is very simple threat, okay? Taking the bishop uh, and, you know, two pieces for the rook. Uh, however, it can be defended pretty easily. Bishop f7. And now, knight f5. Uh, so, knight f6 consolidating the defense. Rook e7. So, jumping in the territory of black pretty interesting uh, the rook of course is defended rook e8 forcing to exchange the rooks but actually here white can sacrifice the exchange that is the first shock shocking thing in the line king f7 and then bishop b2 uh king g8 let's say and now rook f1 so you can start to see some ideas, maybe, you know, exchange the bishop, maybe, you know, put the pressure on the knight, but how to do it exactly? Uh, let's say rook e6 uh, overprotecting the, the knight and then what you have to find is another sacrifice, knight h6. And after bishop h6, the queen can jump to g6. Uh, and after bishop g7, again, it looks like, you know, everything is, is, is okay. But then you have to find the only move in the position bishop d5. 
So uh, this is why I didn't want you to try to find it. This is extremely ugly line. Uh, for now, the, the rook is pinned, the, the bishop is pinned, everything is pinned. Of course, the, the knight cannot take the rook because there is also the checkmate on g7. So uh, let's say queen e8 asking to exchange the queens, uh, but then rook f6. Uh, and the rook cannot be taken because of these two pins. So this is so ugly that this, these guys cannot take the rook. So this is what you have to find. And the problem is even black exchange the material, there is rook g6 uh, and the pins are still here. So uh, the bishop is under attack. Of course, the rook is under attack also twice. You cannot go with the with the king to f7 because that's going to be with the check, hitting your, your king. You can avoid, try to avoid, but then bishop g7. And after king f7, of course, it's completely winning. Uh, for white extra bishop this pawn gonna fall and and so on so this is why our silicon friend actually scream so loudly this is winning move pretty interesting okay bishop e4 was played more human move by ding liren uh, and now magnus carlsen finally play knight c3 but he missed another move of Ding Liren. Boom! Bishop h6. What a move. So sacrificing the, the exchange. Uh, and it actually cannot be taken. Actually, it, it leads to the same line what happened in the, in the game. But White would have even stronger attack. For now, what White achieved is win the pawn and asking Black, what are you going to do? Uh, because I'm going to take your bishop uh, and then, you know, take your, um, your, your knight. And then together with this bishop uh, attacking here, slicing, and that's uh, you're not gonna survive this attack. Uh, what Black could do here, actually, the best move in the position uh, for Magnus was bishop d4. But the position is really complicated. Magnus is very very low on time, and finding such a line again, bishop d4. Uh, the best what White can do here is retreat with the bishop. Uh, and after queen f6, it looks like everything is, is protected. Uh, and actually it is. So rook b to c1, avoiding now um, this, you know, exchange sacrifice. Uh, and then what black would have is rook a2. Still on the board. It looks pretty dangerous. And white have only one move here. Only one move, uh, which have to be fine. Bishop d5, double attack on the, on the king and the, and the rook. Uh, pretty crazy because knight d5 and then queen f2 pinning that knight so bishop f7 it looks pretty nasty because now bishop gonna attack the queen so what would have to be done is bishop d4 with the attack on the queen first uh, queen d4 with check and after queen f2 queen f2 king f2 knight b4 and white has extra exchange however black has these two uh past pawns so still have some chances you know uh to continue the game probably uh can pick up this pawn and that's gonna be uh very very dangerous so this is what magnus carlsen had to find bishop d4 um and all of this continuation queen f6 after however magnus played queen f6 first so he defends the bishop he attacks the, the bishop as well uh, and here, feel free to pause the video and find the final blow by Ding Liren uh, while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? This time is not a joke. You don't need to find the, you know, very ugly engine line. Uh, this time uh, you have to find another combination. So uh, Bishop H7 with check first. So the king is kicked and then rook e8. Uh, this is the continuation. Now, how to react? If black takes, for example, the bishop on h6, it's pretty bad idea. Knight g6 and the king has nowhere to go. Uh, the queen can be sacrificed, of course, or king h7. But then we have knight f8 with check again. And after king g8, rook a8 winning the material. And black even cannot take this, this knight because this knight is still hanging. So, uh, you know, two rooks for the bishop, that's of course enough. So, uh, it cannot be taken by the queen. Bishop h6 is slightly better because now what white have to play is uh, rook e7. 
Uh, and the idea is to, to, you know, double the rooks on the seven rank. Black can try to interrupt this uh, playing something like bishop g7 and after rook b to e1, uh, queen d4 uh, with check, king h1, queen d5 um, and then white can actually exchange everything. So queen d5 and after let's say knight e4, uh, queen e4, queen e4, rook um, to e4 and then after uh, rook f to c8. This is the threat. So uh, that is the one threat. This is another threat. So rook f to c8 trying to save the position, but it doesn't work. Rook d7 moving the rook to the light square. Uh, so it's very solid position now. Uh, making a space for the rook and also this knight can jump over there. So what black can try to actually stop that. Uh, now the rook cannot come to e7, however knight g6 and after king g8, rook f4, the bishop is under attack so have to be moved somewhere and the rook can actually reach f7. Uh, bishop e5 uh, is also the move and there is even stronger move than, than rook to e7 because there is a knight e7 with check and now the point is if the kings move here, then the rook is under attack, so that is the first threat. And if king h8, then rook h4 and the king has nowhere to go. So this way or another, I have to move to the seventh rank. Uh, and this, of course, is, uh, is check. So after knight e7, white gonna have extra rook. Uh, or if staying on f4, that's gonna be extra, extra knight and it's, of course, also winning. So this is not possible to take the bishop in this position and he took the rook on e8 however we have the same combination on the board knight g6 okay so uh king h7 knight f8 and here uh, if magnus go back then uh that doesn't save the game because queen h7 and after king f8 Bishop g7, queen g7, there is rook f1 winning the queen and not much can be done here. King e7, uh, queen g7 with the double attack also on the on the knight. Uh, if the if the king goes to d7, there is the checkmate. So uh, king e6, queen c3 and of course white is winning here. So Magnus Carlsen start to run with the king to the center. King h6, we have queen h7 as before and now king g5. Uh, queen h4 and here is interesting moment because Magnus Carlsen had the plan uh, he wanted to play king f5 and after rook f1 he wanted to resign because of course he gonna lose the, the queen and the game so that was his plan however Ding Liren didn't go rook f1 I hope you see that already queen f4 is a checkmate so Magnus Carlsen got checkmated in the center of the board what a game beautiful game so Ding Liren actually equalized the game and I would like to just tell you that in the game number three, Ding Liren also get the winning position in the end game. However, he messed up the, the, the end game and uh, with the bishop against the, the knight and he just draw. That was his huge chance to actually win the, this match. Uh, this was the draw. The game number three was a draw. The game number four was also a draw. So after four rapid games, we had the draw, you know, both sides uh, got the two points. So that means uh, two blitz is going to be played. And in the first blitz, uh, it was a draw and sixth blitz was a decisive. And I'm going to show you this game as well. So if you don't want to miss that, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.